Folks, today we are going to talk about a bit of a controversial topic in fighting games, and that is going to be health values, or HP, or stamina, whatever you want to call it. The idea that different characters have different amounts of health in their life bar. You know, not every fighting game has this. For example, Dragon Ball Fighters, everyone has the same health. King of Fighters, everyone has the same health. Tekken, everyone has the same health. But in a lot of games, characters have drastically different amounts of health. I mean, if, if, we, look at, if we look at Seth here... How much damage can he do with two hits to Zangief? Not not too much, like, what, 10%? Less than 10%? But how much damage can Zangief do in two hits to Seth? Uh, quite a lot. <laughs> because Seth just has way lower health. So is this fair? Is this good? Should this be in fighting games? I kind of think so. I'm kind of a fan of different amounts of health. There's two main reasons why. So the first reason is going to be for character balancing. So let's look at Potemkin, for example. Potemkin is a grappler. He needs to be close to the opponent so he can grab them. But in terms of tools to get close to the opponent, he doesn't have much. He has no ground dash. He has no air dash. He has an extremely slow walk speed. All he really has is like a double jump, and he has some special moves that help him move forward as well. So Potemkin, they gave him high health because essentially... It's going to be hard for him to get close to the opponent without taking some hits. He kind of needs it to make up for the fact that he is pretty slow and clunky in neutral. And he's going to have to take some risks in order to get in and land these command throws. So that's why Potemkin has the highest health in the game. But then on the other hand, let's look at Chip. Chip has an insanely fast dash speed. He has a really good air dash. He has a teleport that goes like most of the length of the screen. And he even has a fully invincible dragon punch. So when he's on defense, he can get through any opponent's attacks using his invincible moves. So Chip really has a lot of things going for him. And he really does kind of dominate the neutral. So to make up for this, they gave Chip the lowest health in the game. So, you know, of course, they could just buff Potemkin. They could just give him a dash or something. Maybe give him an air dash like most of the other characters and make him better and then just give him normal health. But would that really be fun? Would that really be interesting? I think it's cooler when the characters can stand out more, when they can feel more like you're playing an entirely different game. And being able to balance them based on health kind of helps with that, I think. And the second reason, besides just balance, there's also the reason of flavor and lore and, you know, how the characters feel as a character and in their story. You know, for example, Sagat and Dalsim, they don't really play that different, right? Sagat, he's got really low walk speed. And Dalsim also has, you know, really slow walk speed. These are both pretty clunky characters. They both rely a lot on throwing fireballs and keeping the opponent at full screen. That's where these characters are strongest. So, you know, these are both sort of zoner keep away characters who are not very mobile at all. So why is it fair that Sagat has high health and Dalsim has low health? Well, I mean, just look at him. Sagat's huge. He's burly. It makes sense intuitively in our minds that he's going to have high health, whereas Dalsim, you know, he looks kind of frail. He looks kind of sickly. Uh, it makes sense that he is going to have low HP. So beyond just the balance, I think they're able to communicate some of the personality and some of the sort of flavor of the character through the health values as well. So that's another reason why they do it. So let's move over here to the, the meat of the video here. Let's take a look at DNF Duel and let's put these theories about different characters, different health values to the test. So let's take a look at Kunoichi, okay? Right off the bat, we can see she's very mobile. She has fast walk speed, fast dash speed. She has a double jump, only character in the game with a double jump. She also has a teleport. Similar to Chip, she does have an invincible dragon punch. There are some characters in the game who don't have one, but uh, she does. So overall, I would say she's a very agile, fast character who seems really good in neutral, really good with the mix-ups. And if we look at her as a character, you know, flavor-wise, she's not wearing armor. She's wearing basically like a swimsuit. She's got, like, tears in her leggings, so they're already communicating, like, yeah, she's going to take some damage. And she does. She has 900 health. If average health is 1,000, she has 900. So she has below average health, and I think that that makes perfect sense. That checks out. But then, on the other hand, let's take a look at Inquisitor, okay? Inquisitor has a much slower walk speed. Her dash is still somewhat fast, but it's not really, like, close to the fastest in the game. She has, like, no double jump, obviously. Like, most of the characters in the game, no air dash or anything as well. And then, you know, if we look at her moves, her moves are not necessarily the fastest either. There's definitely a lot of, like, weight behind them. 
She feels like a very heavy and weighty character behind each of her attacks. And then of course, in terms of flavor and her character, I mean, look at her. She's wearing armor. It looks like she's wearing chain mail under her cloth as well. So she feels to me like a powerful, strong, weighty, intense character. So surely she's gonna have high health, right? Or at least average health. But actually she has 850. Can you believe that Inquisitor has less health than Kunoichi? In what world does that make sense? And there's another character in this game who also has 850 health, and that's Swiftmaster. And this guy, it makes perfect sense, right? This is like the fastest character in the game. He's got insane, insane mobility. I mean, the guy's name is Swiftmaster. Naturally, he's pretty swift. He's also small. So flavor-wise, you would kind of expect him to have low health. And, you know, he's like a magic user. He relies more on, like, his smarts and his cunning and his use of, uh, you know, wind magic and spells rather than his physical brawn, as opposed to Inquisitor, who her main strength is her physical power and her physical strength. So to me, it really makes zero sense whatsoever that Swiftmaster has 850 and Inquisitor also has 850. They're tied... For lowest HP in the game. Enchantress also has 850, by the way, the other child of the game, Enchantress. So why does Inquisitor only have 850? I feel like there's a thing in fighting games where they just always give women low health, even if it doesn't really make sense. Now, there are some exceptions, of course. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, most of the women have low health. You know, for like Chun-Li, I think it makes sense that she has low health, right? She is extremely fast. She's one of the fastest characters. She is a very mobile, agile type character, and it makes sense that she has 850 health in a game where the average is 1,000. It's a fun fact that Chun-Li and Magneto actually have the same health. They both have 850. You know, Magneto is famous for being one of the fastest, hard-to-keep-away characters in Marvel, so it makes sense that both of these guys, playing kind of similar, they do have low health. Whereas She-Hulk, on the other hand, I don't even think I should have to explain why She-Hulk has high health. I mean... Just look at her. Also, she's like a grappler. She's slow. She has 1150 tied for the third highest health in the game, which makes a ton of sense. And then Tronbon is tied for second highest health in the game. The highest is Thor, by the way, if you were curious. So there's only two women in this game with high health, but I think that they're good examples. It makes a lot of sense. Tronbon's literally in a robot. Of course she has high health, right? The robot protects her. Makoto is another good example of a woman with high health. In Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Makoto has 1,200 health. For some reason in this game, average is 1,120. Ryu has 1,120 health. So Makoto's got 1,200, and I think it makes sense. You know, look at her walk speed. Yes, she does have a very fast dash speed, and she has this rush punch, so she can feel very explosive, but I think it makes sense for a character that just feels so imposing and so powerful. A character who's going to want to be command grabbing you and then comboing off of it. You know, it makes a lot of sense, I think. She feels powerful. She feels like the type of character that would have high health. So why in Street Fighter 4 does she have low health? She has 950 in this game? What's that about? What's changed? I mean, she's still mostly a, a grappler character. She's still slow. What's going on? I'm not really sure. I feel like there's kind of a trend in modern games where when they're thinking about what should everyone's health be, they, you know, they go down the list and they go, okay, woman, give her low health. Give her low health. I don't know. I just feel like there should be a little more thought put into it. And Inquisitor in Dungeon Fighter is just the number one example that stuck out to me. So yeah, I'm definitely not opposed to using different HP values as a method of balancing the game or as a method of giving the characters some flavor, some variety, making the characters feel more like themselves. I just think it has to be done in a smart way, because to me, it makes no sense that Inquisitor and Swiftmaster have the same health. So I actually had some pretty good matches with Inquisitor Online against a Swiftmaster player. So hopefully this will help illustrate to you guys just how ridiculous it is seeing that these two characters have the same health. So I'm going to show you guys the matches. I hope you guys enjoy. And let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you think Inquisitor should have more health? Or am I just complaining for no reason? I don't know. But let me know. And if you can think of any other good examples of women in fighting games who have high health, like She-Hulk or Tronbon or Makoto, uh, I would love to hear them down in the comments. But for now, enjoy the matches, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Dude. This guy... This guy got some low health, man.
I can relate. My life. Bruh. B buttons are just so fast. It's crazy. Damn. It's just so hard to pressure him because his buttons are so fast. Did you see my fire bottle? It was right there. That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> yes, sir! Yes, sir! <gasps> Woo! Bro. That was intense, man. When you, when you go into Awakening, her fire bottle is so insane because you can just spam it. All of a sudden, it becomes like... Uh, it becomes like troubleshooter grenade. Like you can just do it, no fear. Nice. What was that? I think she tried to do the wheel. Damn, dude. He's like always like delay button pressing. Yikes. I tried to do guard cancel, but I did it too late and just burned my meter instead of my blue gray life. Dude, that would have been so sick if I confirmed. Playing neutral against this character is different than the rest of the cast, because you can't like poke him. He'll just interrupt you out of all your pokes. Whoa, whoa, whoa! How'd he end up over there? Alright. It's wheel time, baby. I think it's because I did one too many hits at the beginning. Alright, we are in Awakening. <laughs> the fire bottle is like the only way I can win neutral. <laughs> it's so hard. All my actual attacks are too slow to contest. But because fire bottle has the backward movement, it's good.
The Wheel of Fate is turning is from Blaze Blue. Ah, oh, I tried to bait it. Dude, I'm not in Awakening. This sucks. You guys see that beat my DP? All right, all right, we're finally in Awakening. Hopefully I don't die here. Just kidding. All right, 1-1, one, 1-1. One, one, one. I think every move does white damage on block, right? It's not a not a wheel exclusive thing. Yikes. I think you just punished my normal on block. Look at these combos. The wheel protect, the wheel attack. Wow, I actually had the kill right there. Uh oh. That was so nasty. Oh my god, he's too swift! He's too swift! <laughs> More importantly, it stays on track. Bro. This character is so fast. It's crazy. Let's go! <laughs> you guys gotta admit, he is a little pervert. That's just fact. Dude, I want to win this match so bad. This has been such a close set. Look at this combo! Alright, well, we are awakened now. We could have killed there, couldn't we? He's crazy. He's crazy. He did dash up DP. I think we could have killed after that DP because it didn't occur to me that we were going to get the, the fire explosion. Whew, I can't believe I won that set, man. That was crazy. That was so crazy. That's why we had to lab those fire bottle combos. You guys saw that, like... We were landing so many mid-screen fire bottles into like 40%.